Everybody, welcome. We're just going to wait a couple minutes, uh, just about a minute or so, just for people to start to come into the uh, space, and then we'll get started. Thanks for being here tonight. <clears throat> All right, I think we'll get started officially. Good evening, everyone, officially. My name is Carrie, and I am part of the programming team at the Westport Library. And welcome to the third part in this new series, Friday night series that we started called How to Sound Cool at Parties, um, where basically we're just having interesting conversations with interesting people in the community. Um, tonight, I'm really excited to talk to Alicia Cobb. Alicia first came on my radar a couple of years ago when a friend of mine um, saw her at an event and was like, oh my God, you have to check out this artist. She's amazing. She's a body painter. Um, and so I've kind of, I didn't even tell you this, Alicia. I was kind of like skulking around and stalking you at the time and just kind of following your work. Um, so when this series came up for the library, um, Alicia was one of the first people that I thought of uh, uh, to bring in and just to kind of talk to and explore her process and um, introduce her work to, to, to the community. Um, so just to give you a little background, Alicia Cobb is a professional video, a visual artist, fine body painter and art educator. Her biggest inspirations are transformation, the human body, emotion, nature, and her children. Her original works can be found on many surfaces, canvas, walls, clothing, and people. Alicia is certified in therapeutic arts and currently works out of her studio space in Bridgeport where she facilitates virtual workshops, hosts virtual social paint events, as well as private lessons and works on commissions. She enjoys giving back and participates in community events and organizations frequently. She acts as a mentor to many young aspiring artists and is currently an art educator in several extracurricular after school and summer enrichment programs throughout Connecticut and internationally. Alicia's body art has been featured in several published magazines. She was also among the highlighted artists in New York City Body Painting Day in 2014 and 2015, the Flesh Art Show in New Orleans in 2015. And she placed top 10 in the 2016 North American Body Paint Championships in Greensboro, North Carolina, which is the only sanctioned body art competition in the United States. She was a 2017 Bridgeport Girls Rock honoree, and she won the award for best artistic concept from the BNT Shark Tank Due West competition in 2017. She's been featured participating artist in public art exhibits throughout Fairfield County since 2015, and has also worked on Westport's own Beachwood Arts and Innovation for years to bring body art and cultural experiences to the town. And as I mentioned, um, we are really excited to, to have her here tonight uh, for this event um, in conversation and also to demonstrate some of her body painting work. So Alicia, thank you so much for being here. Welcome. Thank you for having me. So great to have you here. Um, so I wanted to start just with a little kind of conversation just to get an idea of your background and your process. Um, introduce some of the mediums that you work in and show you know, some of your work off and then um, move into the um, a little body painting um, demonstration. Um, one of the things that, that sort of struck me just in when I learned about you and sort, of, and sort of was introduced to your work and then in the conversations that we had leading up to this is that um, I think th there are many artists who sort of do art, they do their art, but but my impression of you is that art is as an it, intrinsic to your experience of your of relationship to, to, to the world. You don't just do your art. Um, it's a very intuitive process and it's kind of part of how you experience the world and how you experience your own identity, your relationships with others. Um, so I was wondering if you could just speak a little bit about your background, how you fell into what you do and just kind of a little bit about your, your process. Okay, um, so I'll try to keep it as short as possible because <laughs> it's kind of a long story, but um, essentially I was born an artist. I've created for as long as I can remember. Um, when I was little, it was my escape. It was my, my way of speaking. It was my way of getting my point across. It was my way of expression. 
Um, I really got um, into art when my parents got divorced. Uh, it was the way kind of that I expressed myself through, I would like sit down and draw pictures of like families with picket fences and stuff. Um, and I did that for hours and that's kind of what got me through uh, my parents' divorce. And I just kind of stuck with it. It was, it was just my way of dealing with the world. Um, and then I stopped when I was, when I became a mom, actually I stopped uh, because I became a mom and a wife and I was working and going to school and doing all these things. And so I kind of put it on the back burner because I didn't make the, I don't want to say I didn't have the time. I didn't make the time for it because it just didn't seem like a priority. The world um, didn't tell me that it was acceptable to be an artist and a mom and a wife and all these other things. So I put it on the back burner for about 10 years. Um, and then I went through a divorce <laughs> and I ended up turning back to art therapeutically um, because I remembered what it did for me as a child and it pretty much has stuck ever since and I haven't stopped. Um, it is very intrinsic to everything that I do. It is my way of relating to the world, it is my way of communication, it is my way of connection. Um, like I am an artist through and through. I, if I'm not creating, I feel like I'm not breathing, to be honest with you. It is just a part of who I am as a being. So, yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. Like that's that was my impression. It's like if you, the, there's, I think there are some people for where creativity, if it's held back, is actually a, 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 like becomes um, hazardous <laughs> in a way. And it, yeah. and it me that your calling is just to create. Um, and I think it's really interesting that your childhood experience of divorce, you know, started it, and then it was re-inspired by your own parallel experience, which is really, I think, is really powerful. Yeah. Um, so I'm, you know, if if I'm going to put up a um, a little PowerPoint, and maybe we can just go through um, some of your work, and we can just talk a little bit about, you know, the different mediums that you um, work on, and just kind of some of the little stories surrounding some of the art that you've done. Okay. Um, so just bear with me one second while I get this up here. All right. All right. Does that look good? Yeah, that's good. Perfect. So, um, so we've started with just sort of, I guess, more traditional, right, canvas work. Um, so if you want to just describe a little bit around um, this particular piece, which I think is is right behind you, right? This is the piece behind me, yes. Um, so this is a piece that I created, I wanna say 2016. Um, I have a friend that passed away um, in 2009 of cancer. She was 38 years old, very young. Um, it was very sudden. Um, she, she was diagnosed and within a year and a half, um, she gave into the battle. And so this painting is actually called Mian 38. Her name was Mian. Um, she passed away when she was 38. This was a painting that demanded my attention. Every day I went home and I had to touch it. I didn't want to, but I was kind of commanded to. Um, it was very emotional for me to work on and I didn't understand what it was when I was creating it. It wasn't until afterward that I understood the meaning of the painting. And it was basically about transition, about transformation. Um, I didn't even realize until after I finished it, I counted the butterflies and there were 38 butterflies and I did not do that intentionally. And that's when I, realized um, where it came from. So it, it is um, a very spiritual experience for me most of the time when I'm creating. This was one of the first pieces that demanded that I create it the way that it did. Like there was not a day that I went home that I could not work on this painting. So that's the story behind this one. And I think that, yeah, so that's the larger image here. Yeah, that's the full size, which is also behind me. Wow. So this was the first time you said you had this sort of, it was just kind of that intuitive kind of? It was, it was almost a, a um, it was a, com it was almost a command. It was like, you have to create this. And if I don't, um, I almost fall into a depression. That's probably, and I have another one in this show that I'll talk about with that too. If I am um, told to do something, I kind of have to fall into, I, I have to be obedient to it because it's like, this is what you're supposed to create. And if I run from it, it then puts me into a state of really not being able to function properly. So that's what that painting did. So it wasn't until I got it out that I fully understood it. And then I could kind of move through life as I normally would without it being in the back of my mind. Wow. Um, and then can you speak to the other piece in this slide? Yeah, so this other piece, it's it's kind of untitled right now. It's part of a series of children 
um, specifically black children um, and the idea of, again, butterflies, transformation, changing, metamorphosis, and just their ability to be able to dream and create a world, build a world that they want um, for themselves, the world that they deserve for themselves. Um, butterflies are really symbolic to me because of their life cycle process. A lot of people don't know that when butterflies go into the cocoon, their bodies liquefy um, and they literally have to rebuild from scratch. And I feel like we go through that as humans, we go through that process over and over again. Um, specifically, Black people have to rebuild over and over again. And I feel like they just go through um, more than they need to at times. And I, I think we're seeing a lot of that right now in the world. And so most of my art is in tribute and honor to um, my Black culture and my, the community, um, because I feel like we need it. We need that love, we need that light. So that's what that piece is about. It's about promoting these children to dream and create the world that they want for themselves and the world that they deserve. So this is part, this is part of a it's series. It's part of a series, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna actually ask that question later around the butterflies because as I'm, you know, as the people watching will see that butterflies clearly are very inspiring for you because they show up a lot in your work. And so- yes. Thank you for 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 um, sharing that. So it's about it's about transformation, really. It's about transformation and building and and honoring the process that we are in. Like really, just just honoring the process. I'm pretty sure we'll talk about it a little bit later too. But definitely honoring the natural process of what it is that we're supposed to do in life. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. So. Next we have, oh, speaking of butterflies. <laughs> Here we are again, another butterfly. Again, this one is called Queendom. Um, if you look at her wings, it is actually Africa. Um, I, the, it's both sides. So it's called Queendom because um, everything originated from Africa. Mother Africa, it's kind of where everything came from. Um, the body of this piece is inspired by uh, Misty Copeland, who is a really well-known black um, ballerina and I wanted to make it something that again was a tribute to my ancestors and a tribute to the black culture um, and I just I it, this was another one that demanded my attention it was like you have to create this and so I did but I, I was looking at the shape of Africa one day and I literally saw it flip and turn into butterfly wings and so um, there is also a whole series for this one that is yet to be, this is the only one completed, the rest are sketched and will be completed hopefully in the next couple of years. Wow. Um, how big is this? Uh, just hard to see the scale in there, but how, what this one is the same size as the one behind me. Wow. So they're, they're pretty big. I want to say 36 by 48, um, is the size of that piece and framed. It's a little bit bigger. That, that one was actually collected. Somebody purchased that one a few years ago. So, you, so she is no longer in my possession. <laughs> but that's how, how does, so how does that feel? I mean, as an artist, I'm, how does it feel as an artist? To amazing, uh, amazing to that somebody wants something that I created or something that came through me to um, hang up in their homes and admire. Um, and this one spoke specifically to the collector because she is from Africa and she saw pieces in the wings that reminded her of things from home, which I didn't even know about, like, in the wings, there's sections that look like um, utensils and they have these wooden forks and spoons that she literally saw on the wings that I wouldn't even know about. But when she saw the painting, she saw these elements that I, I didn't. And these are things that come through me. So I don't always understand the things that I create. And then someone who it's meant to belong to, it resonates with. And there's the there's the conversation. Right yep. There. That's so cool. Um, do you ever get pangs of like, like they're your they're your babies that you want <laughs> or is it always sort of just a sort of like uh a release no they're all my babies and it's always hard to let go of them but i also know that i was not given the gift to create and keep it to myself so i am actually really proud when they go out into the world and people uh want to own them and keep them for themselves um it actually Though it's hard to let go of them, I, I understand it's a necessary process. So I'm I usually willingly let go. Some I'll hold on to a little bit longer than others. This was one that I held on to for a while before I released her because I was like, no. And then I was like, 
she needs to go where she's going to be appreciated. Um, and so I, I was able to release it, but I did hold on a little bit longer than I probably should have. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't imagine. I would imagine that that would be the case. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, all right. So moving on. Oh, okay. So yes. So speak to this one a, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. So this piece is a pretty jarring piece. This actually was at a show in Westport. It was a pop-up um, show, People, Politics, Planet um, in 2020 during the pandemic. Wow. Um, it was at a pop-up across the street from the library, actually. Um, this painting is called The Element of Freedom. It is something um, that came to me in a dream in 2019. I was absolutely um, I, I was floored by it when I saw it. I woke up, I was like, I'm not creating that. And everything in my spirit told me, yes, you are. There's a whole story behind it. It's personal and political. Um, I used to say I'm not a political person, but I'm an artist, which automatically <laughs> makes me political. Um, and this piece was really about um, being biracial. Um, so I'm intentionally black and white in this picture. Um, is about being biracial, is about being American. Um, it was again about the disparity that the black community faces. So the black butterflies represent um, black people. The stars in the box are falling from their places. Some bright, burn brighter than others, um, according to society. The, the gun is a 45. At the time that I painted this, it was the 45th president of the United States. Um, my arm is painted as part of the fabric of the, the flag. So there, this is a very layered piece. It was a piece that I absolutely did not want to create, but I fell into a depression. I saw it, refused to do it, and then I went into a depression, and it wasn't until I created it that I was able to yet again function. So I get these pieces that I'm demanded to create <laughs> because when I don't, I then have um, a hard time functioning. And so this was one of those, this was the third piece that basically said you have to create it. Um, and everything in me didn't want to. And I, I get mixed reactions from this one. Some people think it's absolutely horrific, um, but most people who've seen it is like, it's beautiful. And I'm like, really? <laughs> because I didn't think that, but it, obviously it's a self-portrait. Um, and I mean, it, it, it's chaos and beauty and stories and just a very layered piece. I, I feel like it's both of, it's all of those. Yeah, it's yeah. And beautiful. I mean, I know that was my sort of feeling about it when I first saw yeah, it. Yeah, it's jarring. And I think until I explain it, people are like, oh my gosh, I'm not promoting suicide or anything like that. It was really about duality and, and the death of the ego, not literally killing our ego because we need it in order to be human, but just allowing spirit to lead and stop allowing our heads to do you know that that's probably that's part of the problem with humanity right now we we allow our minds <laughs> to run the show and that's not we're spiritual beings having a human experience um that is my belief and so this was about really um quieting the mind and allowing spirit to lead yeah i i think what's so what's most jarring about it is is that your face is so peaceful you know it's it's like the sort of horrificness of of the what's happening but there's this this sort of peace and yeah. this sort of steadiness within your face that seems to be in such contrast to the experience of what the painting is but absolutely and this was another piece that i did not understand it wasn't until i completed it that the whole meaning came to me literally last stroke i sat and looked at it and i was like oh my gosh that's when all of it came to me it was not during the process that i understood it it was having to get it out and then understanding the meaning behind it yeah um, how big is this one? That one is 24 by 48, I believe. Okay, so fairly large scale too. Yeah. And how long, I'm curious, like, so something like this that kind of comes to you and that you're like, I, I have to, this, this needs to be, this needs to happen for me to sort of kind of complete my conversation with it. Um, how long does this take, just the actual process of it? This one um, took me well over 40 hours just because I had to keep walking away from it. Actually, every time I worked on this, I would cover it with uh, a dark blanket or sheet um, just because staring at it was really hard for me to do. And once I finished it, like I, well, I look at it every day now and it doesn't bother me at all. But while I was creating it, it was really hard. Um, if there were a lot of feelings and a lot of trauma that I had to work through while working on this piece. So this one took me well over 40 hours. 
Queendom took me over 40 hours and this piece also took me over 40 hours. So it depends on the piece, but pieces this large scale and I don't work through the on, on them straight through. It's okay. obviously over a period of That's my next question. Do you kind yeah. of go the mode of where you just don't eat or sleep and you just paint for, no, know? I I'm not one of those people. Okay. I will not, I, I eat, I sleep, I allow myself to rest. <laughs> There's, I, I definitely am not somebody who like burns the midnight oil. There are times when I have projects where I'll stay up. But most of the time, I'm like, all right, you're tired. Go lay down and revisit it um, tomorrow or whenever you can. Yeah, which I think is, is also kind of speaks to your process as an artist, because I feel like a lot of artists I've spoken to, especially visual artists, they'll go into that sort of state of just kind of almost w withdrawing their own self-care to complete the art. But you have, you, it sounds like you can find that balance. Yeah, I used to. I used to do that. And I've had to, over the last couple of years, find balance for myself and, and really um, consciously practice self-care because I was burning out. Um, and what am I, what kind of energy am I really bringing to a room of students or a painting that I'm doing if I'm burning myself out? Like the work has to be done, but I also need to uh, make sure I'm giving myself the rest and care that I need. So I, I thank God I'm surrounded by people who remind me of that because I can very easily go into burnout. Um, but I have people around me that say, hey, wait, you could save it until tomorrow. Like if I forget, I have people that remind me. So yeah, that's awesome. So that community helps to, to support your, your process as well. Absolutely. All right. Um, so now kind of moving into just different mediums. Um, can you speak to these? these so things? these are both public art pieces. One was for Stanford downtown and one was for Stratford. Um, the first one was adorned. Um, that was for dinosaurs rule from Stanford downtown. They do the sculpture exhibit, um, exhibit every other year. Um, I had two dinosaurs that year. One was this one and one was um, a saxophone player. He was a jazz player. I called him Rexy T. Um, he's not in this picture, but this one is called adorned. And it was basically um, an homage to um, elephants right? It's not an elephant, but it was the closest thing I could think of. Like, that's what it reminded me of. But they're decorated because they're, um, they're really celebrated and honored in several cultures. And um, elephant happens to be my spirit animal, and I love them. And so that was what this was an homage to. And then there we go again on the bench, which is actually not a butterfly. It's a moth, but nobody knows that until I tell them. It's called the Madagascan Sunset Moth. Um, but I love the colors and I love the design. So I decided to put it on the bench and the quote, quote at the bottom says, wings are meant for those who are not afraid to fly. So once again, the idea of transformation and, and you know, really spreading your wings and really going out into the world and doing whatever it is that you're meant to do. Very cool. Um, all right. So uh, you're also a mural artist. So a couple mural pieces in this in this slide. Yeah. So this one is one that I actually did um, in April of this year. It was in honor of somebody who lost her battle with COVID last year. Um, somebody who I knew um, and her sister contacted me. Her birthday was coming up and she wanted to do something really special in her honor. They owned a hair salon together and her sister um, is working really hard to keep that up and running in New Haven. And she wanted to do something really special to honor her. And so she contacted me, asked me if I would be able to create something very special on a specific wall in the salon. So this was what we did. She actually did have a pattern already. Um, and I kind of just mixed it up and did my own thing with it. But um, this was a tough one. We worked 16 hours straight to get it done. <laughs> And we got it done and we got it done in time for her birthday celebration. So um, again, something that I intuitively went in and I kind of, um, I, I, am, I am a big believer in the spiritual world. And so I go in and I'm like, show up, help me out. This is in your honor. I want you to help me with this. And the energy for the whole day was so good. Like it felt so good to, to actually work on this piece. Um, and it was just an amazing experience. So that was one that we did in April of this year. Wow, that's so beautiful. Thank you. And there's the but butterflies again. They just kind of- Yep, all the time. And, and it just so happens that the person who it was in honor of was also known as a butterfly. Like um, her name was Sharon and butterflies were her favorite thing. And it just so happens that they happen to be my favorite thing too. And I think that was one of the reasons why I was probably uh, the artist to, to work on this because it, it meant so much to both of us. That's so beautiful. 
Um, and then what about this little guy here? So this one is actually in progress right now um, at a school in Bridgeport. Um, and you can see the name on it, Bryant Elementary School. It hasn't actually been seen by anybody but the school so far. And you'll notice that there's some parts that are incomplete on the bottom and also in the middle. The reason why is because it's a collaborative community mural. It is meant for the school to be able to be a part of it. So myself and my partner went in and completed the parts that obviously the students and teachers can't reach um, and the more difficult parts. And the parts that are left blank are actually for the students and teachers to go in and paint. Um, and then I'll go in probably next week or the following week, do any touch-ups, finalize the design, um, and then they will be able to have it on their wall for years to come. But it was basically um, an effort of the principal who really wanted to leave something special for the school. Um, as she knows, she's going to be retiring probably in the next few years. And she gave me all these elements that were really important to the school. They did Willy Wonka. Um, and so the tree, she had photos of the children that I basically created things off of. They do music and art. Lighthouse is their after school program. Um, this year, they're actually doing Moana in June. And so that pattern going through kind of the center of it is in honor of Moana. They have a community garden with the sunflowers. They promote reading. The tiger is their mascot. So we basically took the school, um, you know, a bunch of stuff from the school collaboratively and kind of put it together. And this is what we came up with for the mural design. So it'll be uh, the final version of it will be revealed most likely in the next two weeks or so. Very cool. That's awesome. I see the little the little Willy Wonka. The yeah, the Oompa Loompas. <laughs> That's awesome. At first I thought it was students, but I was... Like, well, they are students. They were <laughs> students dressed up as Oompa Loompas. And, you know, Oompa Loompas are orange, but what we're doing with these kids is making them multicultural because the school is very diverse and they want to honor that. And so all of the skin tones are going to be different skin tones. None of them will be orange. <laughs> <laughs> and you work, a lot, you work with kids as well. I mean, you teach kids too. As Absolutely, well. yes. Yeah, I, I teach more than anything these days. Actually, um, with the pandemic last year, I fell into, or or I should say it crashed into me, um, virtual teaching um, of art lessons. And I do it pretty much all the time. I do teach in person as well now because a lot of programs have reopened, but um, virtual art lessons, I do that through my own business um, as well as some contracts with several um, organizations throughout Connecticut. So it's it's one of my main passions right now. I actually really love working with kids. That's awesome. Very cool. Um, all right. So good segue to getting into into our our live demonstration. I'm um, moving on to the body painting now. So yeah. just, like just I mean, how did you fall? How does one fall into painting bodies? How does that? Yeah, this is this is another story where it it kind of crashed into me. So I had social anxiety. Um, I was in a marriage for 15 years where I kind of sheltered myself from uh, the world around me because I was so enveloped in being a mom and a wife and doing what I needed to do. Um, I really didn't socialize much. And I come from this huge family. Uh, and, and like when I say enormous, uh, my dad's family, we have a Super Bowl party every year and there's a committee and we run out of gym and set up five TVs and 250 wow. people show up. Like it's <laughs> wow. big. Um, and my family has always been big and it used to intimidate me because I had a hard time um, socializing because I had been so sheltered. But um, so I would park myself on uh, the bleachers at these parties and I would paint my little cousin's faces with like hearts and stars and simple little stuff. And they would walk away smiling and I didn't have to talk to anybody. And it was perfect until it blew up in my face and people started coming and asking me if I painted rooms and if I did birthday parties and, you know, we're talking like at this point, 17, 18 years ago. Um, and I just one day thought it would be really cool to paint a whole human body. I had never really seen it before, but there was something about the connection of the brush to the skin and energetically connecting to a person without actually having to say a word um, because I was so um, socially anxious, you know, so it, it actually helped me to connect without having to talk. And I, I crashed into it. 2009, I did my first experimental body paint um, and it hit social media and I haven't stopped body painting since. I've painted for um, Yukon and uh, Quinnipiac and I've done you know a bunch of cultural events and people you know hire me to paint their bellies to commemorate their pe pregnancies. Um, these two photos, the first one with the girl hugging herself is actually my daughter who wanted to be body painted for her 18th birthday. And so that is what we did. So she's a tree. Um, and myself and my friend actually collaborated. My friend did the fashion portion of it. Um, and I did the body paint portion of it. 
And the second image is uh, obviously John Lennon. Uh, it was New York City, City Body Painting Day 2015. The theme was what the world needs now. And the first thing I thought was the song Imagine by John Lennon. And so I decided to pay homage to John Lennon by painting his face on the front of this woman. And it ended up going viral and being like the main image for the entire thing that year, which I did not expect. Wow. Um, but it was a very cool experience though. So cool. Um, oh, this one. Yeah, so this one um, was one that I did actually for Bridgeport Art Trail, which happens every fall in Bridgeport, just the plug, because I'm in Bridgeport and we do really amazing things and we have a really rich arts community in Bridgeport. So if you've never been, I'm encouraging you to come. <laughs> we have really great stuff happening here. Mm -hmm. Every fall we do the Bridgeport Art Trail. Um, this was one year that I body painted um, a young lady live. Uh, she volunteered. She was like, I'll get painted. I'll come and get painted. And so she did come and we just kind of did this mashup of whatever her energy was at the time. And she was very fiery and bubbly and happy and um, cool at the same time. So I got a good mix of a lot of things from her because I, again, I'm very energetic. And so this was a little bit of everything. This was all the stuff that I got out of her energetically when we were working together. So do you take the photographs as well? I don't, no, I collaborate with local photographers. Um, I don't wanna be a photographer. I think that there are people specific for specific jobs and photography is not mine. So I literally collaborate um, and it gives us all an opportunity to work together and you know everybody's gotta eat. And I believe that artists should support artists. And so I usually hire um, other uh, artists and photographers to assist me with things that I need help with. So I do not photograph the work. This was actually photographed by um, a good friend, Zybel Torres. She has um, her own company, Zy Photography, and um, she's an amazing photographer of art and family and newborns and everything. And so she's somebody that I work with pretty often now. That's awesome. Yeah, because it's like you the, the, the art, the body art is the one layer, and then there's the picture, the, there's the photograph, which is yeah. a beautiful piece of art. I mean, it's, it's so it's this, we create this whole collaborative kind of thing. Where yeah. Uh, which is really beautiful. It's such a beautiful photograph as well. Um, yeah. Back to butterflies. Yes. Um, so this is my brother in both photos, my brother Brian, who most people in Bridgeport know and even beyond Bridgeport because he's my he's my role dog. <laughs> he's my, he like, comes everywhere with me. Um, he's come to competition with me. Um, he kind of travels anytime I need him. I'm like, right. He's like, tell me when and where. And I'm there. He was at the library with me a couple of weeks ago when we actually um, did a, an event with Beachwood, which was Amplify. And I repainted the painting you see on the right hand side, which goes with a, a spoken word piece that we created together called Skin. Um, and so the, the first photo of the butterfly wings, if you look at it closely, the wings are actually a profile of my face. The blue portion of it is a profile of my face. I literally oh, yeah. um, put my face in it because it was a, you know, it was again, in tribute of growth and metamorphosis. Um, and he, this was the painting that I did for competition that landed me in the top 10, um, which I totally didn't expect because it was my first competition and I applied for a uh, beginner and they put me in professional and I was so intimidated, <laughs> but I went and I did it and this was the result. And I was asked to recreate it for the Bridgeport Art Trail. So the picture of him is not actually a competition. It is my recreation of the painting from the competition for the Bridgeport Art Trail. Very cool. That's so awesome. I didn't, I just noticed the profile. I didn't notice that before. I'm yeah, back. I hand painted the wings before competition. It was a bit, uh, it was, it was a lot, but I got it done and it was good. <laughs> and there's the expression, I mean, just, and, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about this as, as we get into the painting next, but I mean, just the, um, the expression on his face as he's sort of just kind of, just showing off and like, it's just, you could just feel the, the interaction and this, this sort of, this energy that is happening. Yeah. Just, you know. And, and my brother has quite a story too. The body painting has helped him to heal tremendously. He was in a very, really bad car accident at 12 um, and had scars. He still has scars to this day. And for a long time, he was ashamed of those scars. Um, and when I started body painting him, it kind of gave him a freedom mm. to, not feel bad about them anymore. He understands now that they are art and they're a part of his story and who he is. And um, I get that often from a lot of people that I work with. So that is one of the things, and this is why you see that look on his face. First of all, he's a ham. He loves to be the center <laughs> of attention, but he doesn't 
love to be the center of attention when it comes to his scars and yeah. body paint gives him permission to just be art and he loves that you know very cool that's very cool um all right so so let's move into the just, I okay we have enough time so let's move into um to a demonstration now so um we're gonna bring we're gonna bring your model in right <laughs> yep i'm just gonna raise the camera up a little bit because he's tall um, and also for anyone watching if you have any questions feel free to um type them in the q a box and we're gonna be continuing the conversation with alicia as she's painting um so you know feel free to ask any questions about process or just logistics of you know paint cheeses or whatever um in the q a and and we'll make sure to to ask them yes um, you're fine so this is Benny. Hey, Benny. Benny is our model for today. Benny has been painted many times before, so he's familiar with the process. Um, I don't know if you want, I'm gonna get started, but you can ask me you know, anything as I get started, whether you, know, you have questions or if anybody else kind of asks questions. Yeah, so can you actually, just as you get started, talk very just practically about like what kind of paint to use? Is it specific to the body? Is it, you know, just kind of, just logistically, just about what you use technically? Yeah, so what I'm using is actually, we call it body paint, but it's it's really high pigment makeup. Um, so it's literally the same thing that women would put on their faces, um, but it's just high pigment. So it has a lot of color in it. Um, it's, you know, it's approved for the body, for face. It is meant for this type of thing. Um, and I have different brands. There are different brands that work better. Like there are some that are wax based, which are better for like line work. And then there are some that are like glycerin based or water based. And those are better for um, maybe um, blending this type of thing that I'm doing right now. So it really depends on what you're looking for, but it is all makeup. It's not actual paint. A lot of people hear body painting and they think that I'm using like acrylic paint. You should not just quick note, do not paint skin with acrylic paint. I mean, if you get acrylic paint on your skin while you're painting, you can wash off, but it's not something that you're supposed to do. Um, so this is meant for the body. And when you paint on someone, do you have a conversation beforehand? Do you have an idea beforehand of what you're gonna do? Do you work it out together? How does that, how does that process work when you're actually working with um, a, a, a human <laughs> canvas versus a, a you know a, a fixed canvas where you yeah a human canvas it's a very it's a very different experience yeah. um so sometimes it really depends on the circumstance so sometimes there's a conversation most of the time especially for something like this it's just energetic so i you know i might have a conversation ahead of time and think oh this is something that i think is important but I usually, with models, I'll usually ask their favorite colors or symbolically what's important to them. Um, but I, I only usually have a full design for maybe um, pregnant pregnant women because they're very specific with what they want. They'll send me pictures or for a competition. If it's for a competition, I need to know what I'm going in with. But when I'm doing something like this, it's very intuitive. It's very energetic. Um, and I kind of just go with my model's energy and um, what they feel like. And that's kind of what how it happens. So there's not always a plan. Usually there's not, to be honest with you. Um, and I enjoy it that way. I don't like to always go in with a plan. It makes it not as fun, if that makes sense, or adventurous. <laughs> how does it work? I would imagine being someone who is intuitive and kind of connected to spirit and, and works in that way. Uh, um, how do you create your own sort of energetic boundaries between yourself and your model so that you're you're not picking up their stuff or the stuff that they're sort of bringing to the table does that question make sense that is a really good question and it makes all the sense um you know if you're a person who is sensitive we're known as empaths we do energetically pick up on a lot uh, first of all i don't typically work with models who i don't vibe well with I just don't like sometimes I don't know my models ahead of time, right? I might not know who they are or what they're about. Most of the time when I work with people, I have an idea of who they are. I have a conversation with them ahead of time. I've never had an occurrence where I've met a person or been scheduled to paint a person that I have really bad feelings about. Um, 
But as far as boundaries are concerned, um, you know, I'm again a very spiritual person, and so I go into everything, you know, asking for guidance and protection, and you know, not just for myself, but also for the model because models are really vulnerable. Like you're standing in front of a a, a, a total stranger, um, sometimes an audience, like today. You know, we can't see who's watching, but they can see us, and you don't know what's what's around that. And so when I come into a project like this, um, I ask for guidance, I ask for protection. Um, and that's kind of how I create the boundaries for myself, um, personally. Um, I've never again had a situation where, so I think maybe one occurrence where I, I didn't necessarily, I knew I wasn't going to paint that person again. <laughs> like I was like, okay, this is the first and last. Um, but most of my experiences have been very good ones. And I've had, I've not had to set crazy boundaries because I don't know. Energetically, I feel like nothing that's nothing that is uh, meant to harm me is going to be allowed to kind of, kind of come near me anyway. I, I believe that much in my my you know my spirit guides, if you will. So would you you would there if you didn't vibe with someone, you would choose not to. I mean, there is a where you could say you you could say I, I'm just I'm not going to choose to. Yep. To, yeah. Yep, I have no problem saying no. I used to. The same way I've had to build up the, the um, ability to give myself rest, it's the same way I like I, I can very easily look at somebody now and say no. Or people contact me for, you know, body paint to me is a fine art. It is, a, it is an experience. And it's not meant to be something that is objective. I'm not trying to objectify people or their bodies. I see the body as a beautiful vessel that carries us every day and body painting is a way to honor that so when people contact me asking me to do you know things that i deem objectifying i just no <laughs> find somebody else to do it i won't do it um i feel like you know as an artist we need to have uh we need to have boundaries that we set um i have a very high moral compass personally it's not passing judgment on anybody else but I just won't do anything that doesn't feel right to me. Yeah, no, I would think that that would be necessary to kind of preserve your own energy too, especially if you're working on um, people's bodies. I mean, that's exactly. an incredibly vulnerable, nonverbal exchange. That's exactly. Happening. And as an empath, I, I can relate to knowing how that feels to sort of pick up on other people's stuff. And uh, so that's really, that's really cool the way you describe that. It's a great question. That was I've never gotten that question before, and it's a really good one. Yeah, I, I mean, as I'm, it's like one empath to another. This is why I, that's the first thing I thought of. I was like, how do you not pick up on their stuff? <laughs> like, I know the tools that I've built in my own practice, but um, but that's that's tricky. It's tricky sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of tools that I've I've learned over the years just from work I've done um, with the people around me, um, and so I, there are things that I do daily in my own spiritual practice, um, you know, prayer, I have, I burn sage regularly. I have certain things in my home to just keep the things around me clean, to keep myself clean. Um, so there, there are things that maybe some people would frown upon. It's what I choose. It's what works for me. And so I, I make no, I make no, uh, excuses or apologies for the way that I choose to practice my own protection and, and what I do. Um, but yeah, that's, that for me, um, that is basically kind of where I stand with it. Mm. So it, it sounds like rich, ritual is an essential part. Ritual is a huge part of your life. In Absolutely. It's like daily, daily. I have daily rituals that keep me grounded. Actually grounding is one of them. <laughs> I am not a naturally grounded person. I'm a, I'm very water oriented. And so I'm constantly, you know, flowing and um, and so I, I very often ground, which essentially for those who might not know what it is, I think at this point, a lot of people do know what it means, but grounding essentially is um, connecting to the earth in whatever way that works for you. And so it could be done by walking outside barefoot, which I've been doing since I was a child. I never really understood why I did it, but then I found out my mom used to do it as well. Mm. Um, not that I saw her doing it, but I naturally have always gravitated to the ground. When I sit, I usually sit on the floor. I walk barefoot a lot, um, salt water. So I go to the ocean very often. And uh, so grounding is really important to me. That's one of the things that I do 
ritually. Um, I have a prayer altar that is um, really important to me. It's in um, honor of my ancestors. Is she, is she still there? Yeah? Yep. Okay. Um, it's in, in honor of my ancestors. Um, that's really important to me. Everything that I do, I do in honor of my ancestors, which is very important to me. Um, and so ritual is definitely essential to everything that I do. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, that grounding thing too, like earthing, I think they call it walking barefoot and stepping on the ground. I, mean, I think that's really powerful. Yeah. And it's funny as you're talking about water, because it, it's looking to me like this kind of very... Yep. <laughs> right? Feeling. It is very watery, very are you, flowy. Are you comfortable talking? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Can you just describe just, just fit, like how, the, how does it feel? Is it cold or, I know this seems like a silly question, but is it, what's the experience of sort of being painted upon? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's cold initially, uh, like the initial touch is cold, but as you know, the strokes um, apply, it gets, um, you know the everything adjusts. Um, you know, like Alicia said, I've been I've been painted quite a few times by her. So yeah, at this point, I'm just like I'm comfortable. You know. Yeah. Um, but I know the first time uh, I was painted, um, I didn't expect it. Honestly, I was extremely nervous. Yeah. I was auditioning for a fashion show, and then I was selected to model her paint in the fashion show, and I was like, yeah, I'll try it, something different. And um, you know, it's um like anyone else would be uh, nervous, you know, to be kind of just, you know, taking your shirt off and, 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 you know, in front of someone you really ultimately don't know, but I'm like, she touched on before. It's like energetically uh, it helps, you know, the, the connection helps. And then being a empath myself, um, we kind of vibe really well from the beginning, you know, uh, we've been very, very uh, good friends since. So, um, but the feeling of it, it's a, uh, it's really hard to explain like you you do feel it, it's on your skin but it's not uncomfortable mm. you know what i mean um and i try not to keep looking down but, <laughs> <laughs> but i'm not. curious just to see how it's turning out <laughs> it's almost like um like sunblock yeah okay so yeah, it's, it feels like a layer but it's not hardened or it doesn't feel like armor it's like it's a part of you but that's a good way of explaining it. Um, it once it, it's not, it doesn't harden. It's kind of like it. Uh, your skin adapts to it, or it adapts to your skin. It becomes a part of you. Absolutely. Yeah. I think um, ultimately, with uh, just going back to um, just energetically and the selection of colors. Um, you know, blue being uh, one of my favorites. Mm. It kind of just goes with who I am, my personality. Mm. Yeah, it's incredible. It almost looks like you have a shirt on. I mean, it's just like you've just created this whole, it's really, really beautiful. Alicia, how many bodies do you think you've you've painted over the years? How many? Ooh. <laughs> I, oh, that's a great question. Um, I would say probably over a hundred. Oh. Easy. Easy? Easy over a hundred, yeah. And yeah. How, how many you've been paint body painting for how many years? I've been body painting now for almost 12 years. Okay. Almost 12 years. And um, you know, I've I've never kept count because it's kind of just an experience for me. I get the opportunity to do it and I kind of just jump in. But I would say it's easily probably nearing 200. It could be over 200. I don't know. And a lot of people I've painted multiple times. So when you say how many bodies have you painted, I still count the one body. If I paint it multiple times, it's still another body to me. Like I still um, see it as, you know, a, a new body because it's a new work of art, even if it's the same person. Wow. That's still a lot of people to, that's a lot of people to come in contact with. And just yeah, it is. <laughs> Yes. Relationship with. Do you find that, I mean, I would imagine this is a very unique sort of, it's a very unique, vulnerable, intimate thing to share. Whether or not you're having verbal communication or know the person or not, you've had this experience that's unique to you. Do you find that you, you become friends with a lot of your, 
um, subjects for lack of, you know, or, or your canvases? Or is it sort of people kind of just float in and out or? Um, it depends. I become friends with some of my canvases. I wouldn't say all of them. I am a very selective person mm -hmm. about yeah. the company that I keep uh, mm -hmm. regularly just because uh, for the very same thing we talked about as far as, you know, energy and being super sensitive. So I am very selective, but I will say that a good maybe a handful of the people that I've painted are good friends now. I wouldn't say more than a handful, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. most of them but I am connected like I'm still very much associated with people that I painted I admire them they admire me we stay connected but friends are like family to me so it's a little different to say you know that people who I've painted are friends if I don't um I'm not connected to them like regularly if you will um but I have a love for every person and a respect for every person I've ever painted just for them to the, the sheer gravity of being able to let me um, use their bodies as canvas is huge for me. I know what um, what an honor it is, and I don't take it for granted. And so every person I've ever painted is really important to me. Whether we're friends or not, um, they're all really important to me, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's you're, you're going to have a connection, right? Yes. Or not, you stay in connection with them or not. Yeah, and, and you know, a lot of times people come to me and they're really, they're, they're really vulnerable. They've had something really vulnerable that they've gone through. I've painted survivors of cancer. I've painted people who are battling alopecia or other things. Um, people who have over overcome different types of trauma. Like, it's a big deal. It is a big deal. So um, I don't take it for granted at all. And I do connect with everybody that I paint. And I do, they're all important to me. Just taking a moment to observe the process. It's so interesting. This sounds, this is going to sound so strange, but I've never watched anyone. I've watched face painting before, but I've never watched this process before of a body being painted. And as you're, you're, you're doing it, I can almost like feel like, feel it on my, you could sort of feel that on my face. It's, it's just, it sounds so weird to say, but there's this, this kind of visceral thing that happens as you're watching that, which is not the experience of watching someone paint a canvas, like a static canvas. It's a little different. It's, it's a, I, I shouldn't say it's a little different. It's a lot different. Um, I have to always be aware that my canvas is living and breathing you know, I have to ask them every once in a while if they need a break, if they have to go to the bathroom, if, uh, you know, they need to, you know, some people forget not to lock their knees. Like, I'm always aware of the fact that mm -hmm. they're, they're breathing, um, <laughs> you know, and you don't have to do that with a standard canvas. A standard canvas, you just, you paint it, you know, and it's there on the easel waiting for you the next time you come back. It's not the same with people. You have to be, there's an awareness that you have to have with people. Um, and I've had some experiences where body artists do not honor that. And it, it has really like I was at a competition one year and there was a body artist who was competing. And so she was very much in go mode. And her model asked multiple times um, to use the bathroom. And she was like, no, we have a certain amount of time. And I was just like I was assisting her and I put my brush down. And I said, I am not going to continue until you let her use the bathroom like that is not I, I will not work like that. So. I think it's a, an important role, you know, um, to remember the importance of honoring people as being people and living and breathing. And, you know, it's important. It's just important to me to remember that. Yeah, especially because you, you, you are working with someone who has their own stories and experiences and trauma and vulnerabilities and all of that, that they're bringing to the table. So exactly. You okay? I would almost think you have to be an empath to do this, right? It's like it would, or, or I should say it, it, it served, it serves you and your art and your participants so well that you are because you have that deeper understanding. Um, yeah. I feel like it, I feel like it's a beneficial thing. I haven't always felt that way. I haven't always felt that being an empath is beneficial, you know, for people who are sensitive to energies, like 
you know, sometimes feeling everything can be really exhausting, but in the end, I feel like it's, it is beneficial, especially in being an artist and, um, an instructor and a healer in a sense. Like I, you know, I, I've not been appointed a healer or anything like that, but I'm learning that with body art and some of the work that I do in classrooms, it's a very healing thing. And I think artists in general are healers, Mm -hmm. you know? And so um, it's not a role that I take lightly. It's just not, I think that people who have gifts like this should use them responsibly. And so that's kind of the way that I see it. It's funny because I was going to ask you that question. Do you consider yourself a healer? Because I'm always challenged by the. I'm often challenged by the term healer because I feel like it seems to be a very um, kind of, um, you know, sort of power kind of thing that that to call yourself one. But that, but true healers, you, it's this this guiding. It's it's a, more of a guidance, right? And there's a sort of you're facilitating space for someone to kind of have their own experience. And I think that's what it is. I think being a healer just means you have healed to a, a certain extent. Um, you've healed your, your, yourself in certain ways. And so it gives you the ability to give people space um, to do that as well. Because I feel like that's the first thing we need in order to heal as people. I, I think all of us are healers, to be honest with you. Some of us know how to use it and some of us are just not as aware. Um, but it's not something that I take lightly. And even saying I'm a healer sounds kind of weird or cliche to me, but it's only based on what other people have said to me. I'm not certified in healing, so I don't want anybody to misconstrue anything that I'm saying. Um, It's just based on my experiences and what people have said to me personally. Um, So that's where that's coming from. But um, I agree with you. It's not something, it's it's almost like saying it makes you sound like you're trying to be on a power trip. Definitely not. It's definitely not something that um, I I don't want people trying to or assuming that I'm trying to name myself something that I am not. Well, I think it's just like holding space is really what it is. And that's what you're doing. You're literally holding space (laughs) for someone to just sort of transform, which is incredible. Um, So we are we uh, do have a couple questions um, from from the audience here. Um, so one question is, what is your preferred tool to paint with? Um, paint brushes versus sponge versus airbrushing. Do you have a preferred tool? Brushes. brushes. Um, I have airbrushed. I also use sponges, but there's something about holding the brush. There's something, it connects me more. You know, airbrush, there's kind of a separation from me and the person or the canvas or whatever I'm working on. So brushes are definitely my preferred method in almost everything um, that I do, whether it's body painting, mural painting, um, all of it, I prefer brushes. Um, And then uh, another question, how difficult is the cleanup process, both for the model physically and also for you, since um, your work literally goes down the drain? (laughs) That's a great question. Um, I'll I'll speak on my cleanup first, and then I'll let Benny speak on his, because he can, (laughs) since he's done it. Um, My cleanup is fairly easy, to be honest with you. I sanitize my kit. Um, Every time I body paint, I I sanitize my kit, which usually consists of um, uh, spray, especially now. I'm not doing a lot of body painting because of the pandemic. Um, I've been working with the same models, so I know who I'm working with. But um, I usually boil my brushes. Like, I literally will bring them home and boil them in water. Um, I have sanitizing spray. Um, so keeping my, my kit sanitized is really important, but not super hard, to be honest with you. Um, the cleanup process of the actual artwork, um, people ask me all the time, how do I feel about painting something and then somebody going home and washing it down the drain? I don't feel anything about it because it's the process for me. It's actually the art of, of being able to create that I get something out of. And usually it's documented somehow, whether it's through photos or video. Um, and then I'll let Benny speak on the actual process of cleaning the body <laughs> after this. Um, the cleanup's fairly easy. Uh, the shower, <laughs> um, nothing special, just uh, soap and water and a washcloth. Um, you kind of don't want to, like after, you know, going through the whole process, cause you really, um, you appreciate the work, you know? So it does feel like 
initially it's like, you know, you don't want to rinse it. You don't want to rinse it off. You don't want to wash it off because it's all going down the drain. But, you know, you capture it. You, can, you live in the moment. You capture it with pictures and um, like myself, do it again. <laughs> but it's really not hard to come off at all. You know, just soap and water, it comes right off the skin. You might have to wash your tub out afterwards because paint splatter all over the place. Yeah, the tub, the tub is not so easy uh, sometimes. You got to take some Comet or Ajax to the tub and get the stains out. So, Betty, how long, do, how long will you, will you stay transformed like that? Like, uh, like I can imagine that must be so difficult to wash off. <laughs> like, um, how, how long will you want to, you know, I mean, or Alicia too, like how long do most people who are painted, are they compelled to, to stay? Um, I've had people tell me that they are going to go bed get to bed with the paint on. I tell them it's not a good idea because they're going to wake up with paint all over their <laughs> all over their sheets. But I have had people sleep in the body paint and not want to take it off. Most people wash it off at the end of whatever we're doing. So for tonight, I mean, by the time we get off, it's eight o'clock. You know, he's worked all day. I've worked all day. He's probably going to go home and wash it off um, within an hour or two of I mean, we might. I would say we could go somewhere, but it's raining out. And so if we go out, he's gonna actually melt, right? Cause not water, <laughs> there is a such thing as waterproof body paint. That's not what we're using today. So if he was to step outside in the rain, this would all literally start to melt, which would be appropriate because of what it is. But you know, it's, it's for me, like them washing it off right away, it really doesn't, it doesn't bother me. Um, it bothers them a little bit more than it bothers me. I've gone to bed plenty of times covered in paint because, um, you know, for now, like she's just doing my torso and my head. But there are other events where it was like, you know, full body and, you know, you start really early and you're up all day. And then whatever event we have to go to to uh, perform, ultimately, by the end of the night, you're exhausted. And, you know, I'm not really thinking about washing off paint. I'm just going to bed. <laughs> oh, so it's more about just being tired versus wanting to preserve the <laughs> the the art a little bit longer? I guess it, it depends on um, the instance. Um, you know, for something like this, you know, I'd, I'd want to sit in it for a while and just kind of absorb it, you know? Um, unfortunately, it is raining, so I can't really, <laughs> you know, because there are other events where, you know, we've kind of just walked the streets, you know, covered in paint. Um, there was one we did uh, several years ago in, uh, in New York, and you know, I'm walking around in New York with uh, a giraffe. <laughs> a so giant giraffe painted on them. You know, so it's um, it's a really good experience. You know, every time I do it, I enjoy it. Um, I'm never uncomfortable. Mm. Just make sure you eat and uh, hydrate and don't lock your knees while you're staying. Mm. Those are the top rules I tell all of my, my models. I'm like, hydrate, eat, and don't lock your knees. Those are the things that they need to know above all else. But the thing is, like, when, if you are feeling any type of discomfort, you can be 100% open and 100% honest. Like, hey, um, this is what I'm feeling. This is, you know, and she's 100% accommodating. Um, there are no complaints in the process at all. Mm. Awesome. Yeah, it's interesting because I, I I know the experience of having a tattoo, like, an, a, but this is this is different. But the same rules apply: eating, hydrating. But it's a very different experience of having that, you know, application versus this. Um, yeah, Tat it's not as not as painful. <laughs> I have a few tattoos myself. <laughs> it's almost like a massage. I mean, I like a, there's a massage quality to it, right? The the sort of stroking and the Oh, very much so. If I wasn't standing, I'd probably doze off. I was going to say, it seems very meditative. Really, really, just a really beautiful to watch. My my brother, the one who we had in the photos, um, really often when we're out in public, he stands really still and closes his eyes. And people will walk by thinking I'm painting a mannequin, and then he opens his eyes. And they're like, oh my God, he's real. <laughs> because when he gets painted, he does go into a meditative state. It's actually the only time he's still. Otherwise, he's bouncing off the walls. But when he gets painted, for some reason, it completely relaxes him. So there is, I've heard the, the, the meditative or, or uh, massage, I've heard that before. Um, I have not experienced that. I've been painted a couple times, but I didn't have the meditative experience personally. I guess it depends on who's painting you.
Yeah, so that was actually one question. If, if you have ever been painted by another professional artist and what was your experience of that, being a body painter yourself? I have, I've been painted three times. Um, well, only one was a professional body artist. The other two were visual artists who were kind of experimenting with body art. Um, and it was different feelings each time. The first time I got painted, it felt really liberating. Um, because like everybody else, or most of us, um, I, I have body, I used to have body dysmorphia and I still struggle with my own body confidence, but body art has helped me with my own. Um, so the first time I did it was completely liberating. The second time I did it, it was more like a freeing experience. And the third time I was just completely nervous. So I think it depends on who is painting you, to be honest with you, and kind of the reason behind it. Like, is it, is it for a project that's going to be seen widely? Is it for um, just for like a specific series? Is it just because you want to? Is it a bucket list thing? You know, I think it depends on why people are doing it. Yeah, that's a good point. So you feel the intention of the artist coming through as you're- Absolutely, being, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, so just a couple more, just logistical things. A couple questions regarding, um, is, is it, are you, do you prefer that, do your models always have to stand or do you, can you paint people seated um, or, you know, in, in other positions? Um, and also, can you speak to why you shouldn't lock your knees when you, when you stand? Yeah, so typically models are standing just because it's easier for reach. You know, uh, a human body is three dimensional. Obviously we have curves and, you know, if I'm working on a canvas, if he's sitting, there's gonna be areas of his, the front half of him, his chest that will bunch up and I will not be able to reach those areas and he'll stand up and you'll see all of those areas with skin. So this is a reason why I have them stand. Um, I have painted people sitting down. Typically it's pregnant women right? Because having them stand for long periods of time is just not good for them. Um, pregnant women tend to get very lightheaded when I'm painting them. So we either have them laying down or sitting down. So that's usually the only time I'm painting somebody sitting. The knees, the reason why it's important to not lock your knees, when you're standing still for long periods of time and you lock your knees, they can buckle. <laughs> and like while I'm in the middle of painting, they can literally buckle and fall. Or when they get ready to move, there's a tightness, and you could probably speak to that too. If you if you keep your le knees locked and then you move, uh, you you risk falling and injuring yourself just from keeping them locked. I think that's a rule in modeling too, just in general, not standing and buckling your knees. Yeah, from, from what I understand, it's uh, it's a uh, practice. In, I think um, a lot of different fields where standing, people stand for a long period of time. It's always suggested not to lock your knees just for. Um, uh, possible injury. Yeah, it's a, it's a risk of injury. That's really what it boils down to. Like if you if you lock your knees, you can risk falling and injuring yourself and nobody wants that. So that's what the, the not locking your knees thing is. Yeah, it can actually do with circulation too. It, it cuts off circulation. Yeah. yeah I've heard um, it also explained in my family. Um, I have uh, some military in the family. Um, my uncles and my brothers used to say it all the time, don't lock your knees, don't lock your knees. <laughs> it helps to ground more with the knees soft too. Like you can ground your feet more with your knees. Soft. Yeah. Yeah, so it becomes this sort of grounded like, like opportunity, you know, the model is practicing grounding and presence and centering and all these different layers. It's so cool. Um, another question, Alicia, what type of paint, do you, do you enjoy what, one type of painting more than the other? Uh, um, I love all forms of painting, but I would say body painting is probably my favorite and it's because of the connection. You know, when you spend so much of your uh, life, and I did, I spent so much of my life feeling disconnected um, from people, from the world around me, you know, because I was so sheltered. Um, so body painting is, beautiful because it helps to connect new people. Um, whatever they're going through, whatever their story, it gives me the ability to connect and relate and have conversations without actually having to have conversations, if that makes any sense at all. Yeah, absolutely. Um, have you, how was your experience during, like how was the COVID experience and the, obviously the, the lack of that kind of connection influenced, has that influenced your process at all? Has it shifted now that you're moving back into body painting? Has it 
It makes me appreciate it even more. <laughs> um, I definitely, my business shifted during quarantine. Like I said, I been teaching more than I ever have. Um, that's my biggest thing right now is teaching youth virtually and in person. Um, but body art is something that I didn't do during quarantine. And so I have a different appreciation, for, even more appreciation for it now than I did uh, when I was doing it before very freely, because again, that connection, I feel like if nobody, you know, if we didn't learn anything else in this last year during this quarantine, it was missing that connection, especially when we couldn't see our loved ones. And, you know, we were, you know, having to zoom and this is, you know, this has kind of been become the way of the world, but being able to physically be in front of a person and touch them and connect to them. Um, there's a completely different value that comes with that. And so if anything, it's made me appreciate it more um, than I did before. And I appreciate it a lot before I love it, but I really appreciate it now. And I'm excited that we're moving back into a place where I'll be able to do it more often again. And actually New York City Body Painting Day is happening again this July. And I was invited to participate again. So I'm looking forward to that too. Oh, that's awesome. Is that a public thing that just- anyone It is a very to? public thing, yes. Um, I believe it's gonna be happening on July 25th. Okay. Oh, that's so cool. And then the um, Bridgeport Arts Trail, that's usually the first, is that usually the, the November in November? It's November. It's usually the first or second weekend in November. Um, okay. It just depends. You kind of have to find or look for the announcements and they tell you, they'll typically tell you or make an announcement of when it's happening. And I have a feeling it's going to be a pretty big deal this year. Since last mm -hmm. year we had to do everything virtually, I think people are going to come with their absolute best um, not that we don't every year, but I think this year is going to be a pretty big deal. Yeah, I can't wait. I love and we that. have a lot of art buildings in Bridgeport and a lot of art to see. So I really do encourage people to come up in the fall um, because there's visual art, there's spoken word. We literally have uh, performing art. There's so much going on in the city. It's, it's, almost, it's so much you actually can't even catch all of it. You miss most of it if you don't like come and take advantage of it. But there's an entire trail and there's a book that they print. Um, with with all the locations and exactly the times, what's happening. I usually body paint live, so you could actually come and see it in person this year. Um, so it's 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 a big deal. So I definitely encourage people to take advantage of it. And your studio is at the Nest. Yeah, I'm currently at the Nest in Bridgeport. Yeah, that there the, Bridgeport has such an incredible network of artists and artist community from all visual arts, storytelling, you know, like all different mediums it's and it's absolutely incredible I, i'm so happy that that's going to be um live again I really yeah i'm looking that. forward to it um uh we have a just a message that um sarah and terrence say big 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 hi to you hi, <laughs> that's my know. sister that's my art sister <laughs> that's my soul sister hi sarah hi terrence <laughs> i'm so glad you guys were able to tune in lots of fans um so um, while you're um, kind of finishing up there, Alicia, I'm gonna put your information in the chat so people can go to your website and, and check out everything you have going on. Thank you. Um, that's just arts. It's artsimplicated.com. .com. All right, so I'm gonna put Alicia's website um, in the chat so you can check out everything she has going on, all the classes and everything. Um, let me just make sure I spelled it right, artsimplicated.com. How you feel? Yeah. I think I got all of it. I didn't get under your eyes, but I don't. I don't typically uh, try to because it's more difficult to do that. <clears throat> I can try to do it though. No. <laughs> 
Let your eyes and look up. This used to tickle. <laughs> Not anymore. Huh? Not got used to it. Get used to it. Yeah. Alicia, another question for you. How does it feel to be both creating and public speaking in front of an audience simultaneously? Is this a platform or a format that um, is something that you'd like to do more of? And also saying how awesome this is and you are, by the way. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, at first it was really weird um, and it, did, it, it happened very organically, the idea of uh, painting and public speaking. I was, I was painting, I believe for the Bridgeport Arts Fest um, in public on McLeavy Green. And um, as I was painting, somebody came up, I was in a zone and somebody came up and started asking me questions. And I at first didn't know that they were talking to me. Um, and then somebody kind of alerted me that I was being asked a question and I just started answering them. So. I'm actually comfortable with it now. I will say that when I first started doing it, it was kind of weird to me. Um, and now it just comes really naturally. I, I'm in a zone and I can paint and somehow still talk and answer people's questions at the same time. Um, and as far as whether or not I want to do more of it, I would love to be able to do more of it because I feel like this is, um, body art is an ancient art form that I feel like more people should be able to experience. And I think that a lot of things in our, uh, I guess our society have been tainted, if you will. And like, I, again, see this as a fine art. I see it as something that is um, cultural and necessary and beautiful and ceremonial. Um, and I feel like at times people can make it something else. They can make it derogatory or over-sexualize it, which is not at all what it is for me. And so I, I love like when I'm at public events and kids come and they get to see something like this happening because it's not something that you see every day, especially in Connecticut. We're a very conservative state. And so body painting here is kind of, what is that? But kids are fascinated by it. And actually New York City Body Painting Day, the first year I did it, we were coming down the street, this mob of like a hundred blue people because we had a specific color palette we were working with. And there was this little boy on the side of the street with like a, a it looked almost like the Velveteen Rabbit. And he must have just gotten out of tap class and he saw these blue people coming. And I think in his mind, it registered as an opportunity to perform. So he starts tap dancing <laughs> for this audience of blue people. And he was so excited about this. And then one of the models kind of pulled over and starts tap dancing with him. But it was something I'm pretty sure he's going to remember for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we should expose our kids to more diverse experiences and I think body art is a really important one because again it's something that is an ancient art form um, in so many cultures from tattoos to piercings to paints to you know all kinds of stuff was used um, and still is used ceremonial you know it's like rites of passage and all kinds of things that people use this for so I think it's necessary you know I think it's a necessary thing. Well, and this idea of being marked and the relationship to identity and our own identity and how our, our identity interacts with the identities of those around us and how we define ourselves, you know, it's like, I mean, I think that's very powerful, this idea of just being marked in a way and the experience of that. Yeah. Can you describe a little bit about like what's, what was coming up for you as you started working on Benny and just what, what you're sort of, what this is, you know, just the experience of this? 
So he's a very flowy person. Um, and there is uh, there was a quote that came to mind earlier, and I don't know the quote verbatim, but I know a lot of people will know exactly what quote I'm talking about by Bruce Lee, who was very much um, very, very necessary to the world as an artist and a human being. And one of the, his quotes is, be like water. Um, and I feel like right now we have so much going on in the world. Um, and so all I felt today, um, and both of us are water signs. Um, and I, I think just the idea of flowing like water, being like water, kind of just allowing yourself to be and stop trying to force things. Um, I've been in energy in the last month or so where I've been kind of stressed out because of a lot of what, it's all good stuff, but it, it gets overwhelming sometimes. And I have to remind myself to ground, to be like water. And so that's what was coming to me because he's a very uh, calm, he has a very calm presence about him. And um, that's, this is kind of just what came out because of that, I guess. So water, um, earlier I was thinking stained glass and that's not what, this came out very flowy. Um, so I'm just, I, this is what it came out as just because this is the energy that I'm, that I'm getting and that I get from him. So that's kind of, again, it's an energy thing. It's not really a thinking thing at all. And blue happens to be a color that I love too. So it comes out in a lot of my work, just like the butterflies come out in all of my work. Blue also, you'll notice in almost all of my work, you'll see the color blue somewhere. And I learned years ago, um, hopefully by my friend Janelle, who's hopefully on this, uh, performance as well. Um, that blue, specifically indigo, is a color that is often used when honoring ancestors, which is something that is really important to me. And so that might be my reason for being attracted to the color blue, but it always comes out in my work too. So that's kind of uh, the story behind it. It wasn't a thinking, it's just kind of a feeling and going with his energy. That's also, blue is also fifth chakra, the throat chakra, right? Yes. So it's about expressing your voice and just continuing to, which is cool. That's, yeah. That's, that's what, that's what came to mind. The, the third, I believe. No, yeah, the crown. It might be the third. I don't know. It depends on which order you're going in, I guess. Right. You're going from first. And you start from the root and you go up. Yes. I was starting from the root. Yes. You start from the root and go up from there. So yeah, I didn't even think of that. That, that also, because this is my voice. This is my way of speaking to the world. My art has been my way of speaking to the world. And so it could very much be that as well. I didn't even think about that. I just learned something today. Well, you're what sign too, so that makes sense. <laughs> what is your, um, just now that it's sort of more formed on you, Benny, what is your relationship to that? Can you, just in terms of a visceral experience, not even just visually, but just what it feels like to be in that water, water space? Um, I'm comfortable. I'm. Like she said, I'm a water sign. Um, blue is also my favorite color. Um, and like she said earlier, how the uh, the energetic connection, um, you know, there's really not much conversation around it. It's just, just going off of, you know, what my personality is and, you know, the kind of person I am. Um, and I'm really comfortable. I'm most comfortable around water. Um, I'm most creative around water. It's my uh, tranquil space. So um, even like nights like tonight that it's raining, um, it's 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 a really good feeling for me and it's um, therapeutic. So I'm gonna sit in this for a while and <laughs> kind of just embrace it and enjoy it and just might go to sleep. In it. Wow, that's really cool. Um, another question: Would you be open to painting bodies for carnival ev carnival events in the islands? Oh yeah, I actually would love to do that. I would, carnival, um, crop over, I know exactly what they're talking about because there are costumes specifically, I have a friend that makes them. Um, I would love to paint people for carnival events. I love stuff like that because again, it's a celebration, it's a cultural celebration. It's something um, that is celebrating you know, the, the, the heritage there, you know, the, everything that happens there. I have a friend from Barbados. Um, she might be on the call as well, hopefully. Um, and they have crop over season and she's been trying to get me to come over there for years to paint people for crop over because that's what it is. It's a carnival and they dress in these elaborate costumes with feathers and everything else. And it, again, it's a celebration. So yes, I am absolutely open to that.
Yeah, that's her, uh, Mar Markeisha, is that her name? Yes. <laughs> Markeisha. <laughs> I'm so I glad think... my people have made it to this call. <laughs> <laughs> trying to lure you over <laughs> through that question. That's awesome. It's, it's, it's such a cool experience to just watch it transform in real time. I feel like this is what it looks like in my mind. <laughs> like if someone was to like fit, like enter my mind, this is what they would see. Yeah. Kind of, but more like moving around you know, in motion, maybe like wind or water. That that would be cool if I could actually create paint that moves. But the beautiful thing is on the button. This is another thing about um, body art is it even if they're standing still, there's just natural movement in the body that you don't see on canvas, and so being able to paint somebody and watch uh, the artwork come to life on their body is always a really cool experience too. So that's another thing that I love about it. Yeah, I was thinking that even watching you, because when they're static, they're, um, you're tracing contours of muscles, but then the, the slightest movement of the arm, the muscle contour will change, and then that will change the, the yeah. shape of the, it's just so interesting. Yeah, it's a it's a really cool experience to watch it come to life. Um, I love painting dancers and and uh, people who practice yoga because they they have a way of contorting and moving their bodies. Um, they know their bodies really well, um, which is also always a really cool experience. Uh, just kind of watching. I've done um, photo shoots with people who dance and and practice yoga regularly, and just what they do with the paint. It's it's just amazing to watch. Yeah, I'm going to splatter you. Let's do it. Wouldn't be water without splatter. <laughs> I'm going to do my best to not get it on your. It's fine. Go wash up. Well, you know better than I do. Yeah. That's another thing. If you get it on your clothes, it'll wash off. Oh. <laughs> Just don't know wash I think it depends on the color, too. I feel like some of it does stain. I haven't had that experience yet. Good, that's good. Oh. That's a good thing. All right, you ready? Let's do it. Yep, that did it. <laughs> we got bubbles. We got splatter. <laughs> Feels like I'm outside. <laughs> oh yeah, it's raining. It's raining on you. I know. I was as you were doing that. I can hear the rain in the background and here, and you know, too. So it's like this 4D sort of experience. Yeah. <laughs> Types the sound in. It's all coming together. Yeah, so there's not a whole lot more I would do to this because it's kind of, you know, it, it's kind of the whole purpose. I just brought the, the splatter into it because I felt like it needed it, you know, the, the splatter white. But again, water, flowy, um, you know, that's kind of what I was feeling. So I went with what I was feeling. Um, and so this is the end result. I don't know if anybody else has questions. Uh, and I think... Oh wow, we're we're at, well, are we over time? We're way over, but you know yeah, what? Yeah, I'm like looking at the time, like oh my gosh. <laughs> it's, it's I mean, it's how do you how do you not you know go, kind of follow this through? I think everyone is yeah happy to stay with you. Um, one last question. Um, 
how do you choose, you, you, you've spoken a little bit about your relationship with models and sort of um, having conversations with models. Is there a specific process you go through for choosing your models for a competitive project or a, a specific, like maybe a commission project? Um, like oh, that's a great question. Um, competitive projects, I'm gonna be honest about competitions. Um, I don't go into competitions to win. <laughs> I know that kind of defeats the purpose, but I go into competitions for the experience. And if I win, great, but I feel like the pressure of um, going into it with the mindset that I'm, you know, because the first time I competed, I was against people international, like Italy and, and Japan and South Korea, and just people who've been doing this for 20 something years and they've won awards before and they put me in a category with these people. And I initially I was like, oh my gosh. And then I was like, you know what, Alicia, the fact that you are being placed in a category with these people is in of itself an honor and don't go there with the mindset of you can't win because I can, but it's more of the experience for me. I, you know, I win every day just by being able to wake up and, and do what I do, do what I love. And so for me, when it comes to competition, I choose people I enjoy working with. I choose people who enjoy the art as much as I do. I'm not concerned with what their gifts and talents are, if they can somersault and <laughs> like a lot of people look for that. I don't, I really just enjoy the experience and I enjoy allowing them to share that experience with me. And so the way of choosing models um, for me is just people I vibe with and I enjoy uh, spending time with and um, they're just meaningful. And so there's not really, I just reach out to people who I enjoy working with. And if they're available, they're available. And if they're not, then I'll reach out to somebody else that I enjoy working with. And that is my process. Like usually I do end up reaching out to people that I've worked with in the past because we, we do have a, a, a good vibe connection, uh, relationship. Um, I don't have a process of choosing models as far as like skill and talent level, also body types, like you know, uh, people look for, you know, what's deemed the perfect body. I do not discriminate. I'll paint anybody that wants to get painted. I feel like there is nobody that doesn't deserve to have the experience of being a piece of art. And so I don't discriminate. I don't, I don't, uh, no ageism, no sexism, no, no body, um, I, none of that. Anybody who wants to be painted um, can contact me. And I'm, I've had people who are um, older and kind of want to do this something, this is something um, that they just always wanted to do. I have people, again, that are survivors. Um, I have people that are overweight. I have people that are underweight. I have people with tons of scars that reach out to me and just say this is an experience that they want to have. And so I do not discriminate at all. Um, Nancy Nish wants you, wants you to know that she wants to be a model for you. <laughs> who, who, want, who is that? Nancy Nish. Is she someone that you know? Nancy Nish? Yeah. Yes, she's one of my best friends from childhood. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All my people on here tonight. I love, I love you guys for showing up. Thank you, everybody who actually follow the link because I literally sent them all the link as a reminder today. <laughs> but Nancy was my uh, she's my childhood best friend. We've known each other since we were oh, yay big. Yeah. So she's watched, she's watched the evolution. And she knows anytime she wants to get painted, all she has to do is call me. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, I think that's a perfect note just to end on. Um, thank you for, for giving us more of your time than, than we had thank you. negotiated. Thanks to everyone who, um, who watched tonight. Alicia, this was like, this was really, really special. I thank really you. Benny, thank, thank you so much for bearing your chest and your soul. <laughs> And, um, and being a part of this tonight as well, um, I highly encourage, it sounds like most of your people here sort of know where to find you, but um, if you're new to Alicia's work, please check out artsimplicated.com and you can find more about her. Bridgeport Art Trail this fall, uh, New York Body Painting, uh, a competition, right? Enjoy no, it's not a competition. It's just a public uh, body, it's a body celebration day, literally. Like it's just a celebration. It's kind of like all bodies are good bodies. So people from all walks and all shapes and sizes come and get painted and it's a celebration of the human body. Awesome. Um, and, you know, reach out to her for any special commissions, art classes, all kinds of stuff going on on her website. Um, thank you so much for being here. For being thank you. Here these conversations with us and um i look forward to to seeing more of you and uh to 
see more of your work uh, and what comes next uh, now that the world is opening back up again. <laughs> Thank you so much, Carrie, for reaching out and having me as a part of this special. Absolutely. Thanks to everyone who um, stayed with us uh, for a little longer. And please check out um, more of our conversations. These had a sound cool at parties events. We're not going to have them every Friday night, but um, we're going to be smattering them on Friday nights throughout the summer and, and into the fall. So um, thank you all for joining us. Have a great long weekend. And um, thank you again, Alicia and Benny. Uh, it was a real pleasure to, to speak with you. And to thank you, guys. Love you. Thank you. Thank you.